Hello everybody, Tobirdit here. Welcome back to Crash Bandicoot. In the last episode, we got the green chaos gem. gem. Now we're gonna go to Temple Ruins. Yeah. Uh, this is, that is not Sonic. I'm sorry. This level is spooky though. I don't know how many, like I don't remember how many colored gems there are. Um, so I don't know how it compared to Chaos Emeralds, I guess is what I'm saying. I don't know, it's irrelevant, but <laughs> let's keep going, I guess. Watch out for snakes and just these giant holes. I don't know, you could fall in that hole. I'm glad you don't though. Also, yeah, the spears are just on a timer, so whatever. Can jump over these. We've got magic boxes. Probably jump away from the TNT. Probably. The music is neat. I enjoy it. Also, Revenge of the Bats. They will never leave us alone. And Crushers. They're not really on a strict timer. They're okay. And also Giant Spiders. <laughs> I actually dealt with it really quickly. But um, they're not really that scary. They're just fat. We will see more of them. Don't worry, don't worry. It's okay. It's nothing to be scared of. Like really, I I don't remember if I was scared of the spiders in this game at all. I I probably was, but I mean, whatever. They're silly and they're bouncy, and you use them as platforms quite a bit. Also, Revenge of the Giant Torches. Oh my gosh. Also, Snake Spears. Have you ever heard of such a thing? It's not as threatening as it looks, though, so it's okay. Oh jeez. Let's jump off the fire. Well, I think the timing on those is different from the ones in the native fortress. Either that or I'm terrible at this game, but shh, don't tell anyone, okay? Please? I'm terrible at this game. Don't tell anyone, the bats will hear it. Also, um... That box is weird. When you're, uh, yeah, like... Behind a crusher, camera-wise. Uh, it stops going off. So that's convenient. Let's re let's time that better. Cause yeah, that platform <laughs> was gonna screw me over. There we go. Also here's the thing. Um I'm probably gonna screw this up. But check that out. The game designers are rude! So I think there's actually bottomless pits here, which means I'm probably gonna die. No, 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 no. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. There's just tricky boxes here. We'll get on the way back. And yeah, fortunately, it's just this. There's nothing else really dangerous here. So, but geez. Yeah, that's probably the rudest thing the developers do here uh, is with these invisible crates. It's okay. Like, there's a wump leading towards it, so it's not, you know, as terrible. But I mean, yeah, I was worried about a bottomless pit in the middle of invisible crates. And there's a reason I'm worried for that. And that's when the developers are really rude. So let's get mad at them. But no, it's okay. Probably. Ahem. <laughs> Oh yeah, these weird rotating platforms just around the center point will randomly fall at two points, I guess. Not randomly, at a set point. Here's a spider. Uh, actually, it only has six legs. I guess it's not a spider, but it's silly and fat and very bouncy. It's kind of fantastic, really. So don't worry about it. Also, this level just goes all sorts of ways. You go away from the camera, and then you go perpendicular to the camera and then you go across invisible cameras not a thing and it's okay well I guess the camera could technically be invisible could it? it probably is oh my gosh because I guess when you consider that the only game probably not the only game one of the only games with a visible camera that exists in the game world is like Super Mario 64 
He's locked to as a person. It's kind of weird. And then when you think about that, that game is a second person view. So that's all sorts of silly. Also, I yeah, be careful when you jump because of bats. That's okay. Um, I'm paranoid about bats, but that was fine. We did it! I think we got all the crates, probably, hopefully. Yeah, we did. You know why? Because you're awesome. Ba -da -ba! I couldn't have done it without you guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alright. Um... Wait, is this, the, is this one? Road to Nowhere is also another level with a unique theme. And gosh, it's it's memorable. Um, I guess I'll just say it like that. I don't know what I'm trying to say, let's just go for it. I was saying, um, like, you know, invisible platforms. And sometimes it matters. This is not the one it matters in, though. It's another one like this. Where it matters. Anyway, yeah, this level is a pretty weird one. Ow. It's very straightforward, but lots of crumbling platforms and tight spots to jump on, and bottomless pits and hogs that you can't kill, by the way, so don't try. And icy ledges, and I don't know, there's a lot going on here. And it's just incredibly dangerous. Uh, this level is called Road to Nowhere. As a dumb child, I once thought this was like, Road to now here. <laughs> But no, I was dumb. Don't, don't, it's not. Don't call it that. Also, these hogs are kind of dangerous, but you can... You could do that if you want to. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise it, but you could. I'm not worried about dying, because uh, we need a red gem to, uh, to get all the boxes here anyway. So whatever. But if you're tricky, and apparently better at this game than I am, then you can stand on the rope. And then you can just kind of avoid all the dangers here. And I think you can run on it for a bit too, but it's kind of dangerous. I think I thought I saw... Yeah, there's a, there's a little red gem. <sighs> there's a little red gem icon that's right next to the checkpoint, but I mean, they vanish when you get closer, so... Yeah, like I said, we need the red gem. I'm not worried about having died those two times. It's it's a stain on my character, on my record, but whatever. I mean, we've already got 71 lives. This is continuing from last time. Uh, so there's that. And the checkpoint before then was pretty bad, so I actually played quite a bit before it and got plenty of lives. But still, this game does not skimp on the lives, for example. So don't worry about that. Again, unless you're just starting out, like, with a password that leads you right to the end game or something you don't have to worry about lives so yeah let's just go to the bonus round and get more lives and a password which will hopefully be convenient because uh yeah this may be a shorter episode but i'm gonna cut it after this level says because because reasons do you mind check out this chain reaction yeah, I learned about explosives from Crash Bandicoot. I don't know. It's silly. It's neat. You can never go wrong with chain reactions. Never. Well, okay, maybe we could, but uh, no, never. And also, 14 out of 32 levels already. That's pretty quick. Guys, I'm scared. This game is shorter than I thought. Not entirely. It's still plenty hard. And we're still going to be getting lots of gems, but... Well, either way, that that doesn't... That's not a bad thing. I've got plenty of other games I need to be playing, so... It's okay if a game is short. It's okay. Anyway, so after this... We end up at Boulder Dash... How could I deny you guys Boulder Dash? Let's go one more. Okay. Could you guess what kind of level this is gonna be? That's right, another backwards level. What could that possibly mean? And also, again, um, this is a level 
Square boxes don't matter. We need a purple gem. We don't scot the purple gem, so let's just roll with it. Okay. Well, well, I guess I'm really starting to die now. But again, thank goodness that doesn't matter. We don't need all the boxes because we can't do anything about it. But I mean, yeah, I don't think I really pointed those out before. Uh, little wooden fences or uh, ankle edges. Mm. Don't run into them. They will slow you down drastically. And in a level like this, that's not... In a level like this, it's not a very great thing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, episode two. Uh, like during my little time lapse, just like running through the boulder level. I, I spun one of these, like jump and spun it, and that was a stupid idea, and it, it killed me mid-time lapse, which you may have noticed. That's the explanation for that if you missed it. I spun one of those, like a dum-dum. Also, yeah, moving platforms. Try not to freak out too much. Also, try not to move sideways too much, I think. Because any movement that's not straight away from the boulder is not a good movement. Uh, unless you're a really cool speedrunner guy or something. Because there's actually um, a technique in this game. I don't know what it does to the physics dungeon. But if you like uh, very slightly wobble in the direction you're running, you'll go faster, I guess. I've never tried it out too much, but um, that's a thing, I guess. Um, and I guess when I say wobble, I do mean like with the D-pad and stuff, I guess. Because yeah, this first Crash Bandicoot game, it did not support analog controllers, actually. What? A 3D platformer with no analog stick support? Blasphemy! It's true. But, why, why did he cheer like that? I died. Yeah, why, why did it celebrate for me? I died! Oh wait, no, it's because I died and got sent back to the very beginning. So it's like the level just reset. I didn't start a checkpoint. Okay, that's cool. But yeah, uh, it's it's not a terrible thing that this game doesn't have analog support. Because it's it operates pretty 2D, really. It doesn't feel necessary. Hmm. But enough jabbering about that, I guess. I'm going to cut the episode now. Uh, thank you all for watching. Um, and yeah, this has been to Weird Dude. I'm still really terrible at outros, apparently. But I'll see you in the next episode. Take care, everyone.